Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be flying the European business class of British Airways which is different to long haul business class so we're just going to see what the differences are. A few months ago we flew long haul business class for the first time and really enjoyed the experience. It's horizontal and it's amazing and I love it and I never want to travel cattle class ever again. We flew with British Airways on a 777 in their brand new club suite. Flat, do you see that? Flat. However, when travelling short haul with British Airways the experience is a bit different. It's the same seat as economy. So today we're taking a return trip from London Heathrow in Club Europe. So we're going to be vlogging both flights we're taking, both there out to Dusseldorf and then flying home from Basel, actually a different airport. I'm looking forward to the Basel because we get to go into this amazing looking lounge and also I want to compare whether going out is different to coming back. But is it worth upgrading? Let's find out. I'm very happy now. And just like when we flew to Cape Town we used points to buy this flight. Except a bit of a difference is that this time we only pay the natural cash terms 50p each. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, 50p per flight, shall we say, so £2 for a return, plus 30,000 points. It's literally cheaper than travelling on the tube in London. Cheaper than bread. <laughs> to find out how you can also travel on business class at a much cheaper rate, um, check out our blog on BA Amex cards. We'll be departing from Terminal 5, like most BA flights from Heathrow. It was very busy today, with very long queues everywhere. Even the dedicated business class check-in area in Zone H was overflowing, so we instead opted for the self-check-in kiosks, which took away from the premium feel somewhat. Alright, let's see how this works then. Yeah, it's a print vector. If you if you watch the little thing, it'll tell you. Oh, it sticks. I didn't know it did that. Send back. Yeah. Bye, back. See you in Germany. Right, bag drop done. Such a palaver with the self <laughs> drop thing. Always, and so, many, and so many people not knowing what they're doing. Anyway. Like, like oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> like me. I mean, it should be a simple I can, I'd just pay someone to do it for us, please. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Fast track security is included with all business class tickets, although it was so busy today that after scanning us in, we got directed into the regular security area instead. But the entire process will only take about 20 minutes, which is not too bad. Another palaver. It was my turn to go through the eh, thing this time. <laughs> You went through no issues this time. No, I had no issues. It's because I'm wearing very tight jeggings and I can't hide anything. There are two lounges in the A terminal, so it's best to go to the lounge that's closest to your gate. However, our flight hadn't been assigned a gate yet, so we just went to the North Lounge. Located at the far end of the terminal, this lounge has great views over the apron and runway. There was lots of seating available, but just like the rest of the airport, the lounge was so busy this morning that actually finding a couple of spare seats together was quite hard. We entered the lounge at about 11.30 in the morning, so they were serving lunch. There was a wide selection of food and drinks on offer, from salads and sandwiches to pie and mash with peas and carrots, pasta, soup, and an assortment of snacks. There was also a full self-service bar with everything from wines, pre-mixed cocktails, a large selection of branded spirits, soft drinks, as well as Bottega Prosecco. Notably missing though is proper champagne, although I did later find out from a friend that they keep this behind the scenes, so if you ask a member of staff for some, they'll gladly provide it. I decided to try the pork and apple mini pie with mash, peas, carrots and gravy. That pie is pretty good. So difficult to eat with one hand though. <laughs> That's a cucumber salad with radish and mac and cheese. I couldn't find ketchup, so I got salsa because I like my pork pies with something. This is really good. I also had to come check out the toilets because my previous experience of a BA lounge toilet was really bad and I'm sad to say that it wasn't much better here. It was generally clean, but again there were tissues on the floor and the whole room was scuffed and just badly maintained. Also, this all-white decor doesn't really scream premium to me and has more of a medical clinic vibe about it. If I was BA, I'd consider refurbishing these as soon as possible because, as you'll see later in the video, even smaller airports can easily beat these. Alright, here's a question. British Airways and, in fact, most major airlines, they say that if you're checking in for, like, a domestic or European flight, you need to check in two hours before the flight leaves. Whereas if you're travelling on a long haul, they say check in three hours before. And yet the process is exactly the same for both, so I don't really know why they do that. I can understand it in some places like America, for example, if you're taking a domestic flight, 
you not have to go through passport control and things like that. But when you live in Britain, there's no passport control of any description anyway. So, yeah, if someone could tell me exactly why they do that, tell me down in the, in the comments below, because I really want to know. By the time I got to the gate, it was final call, and we were basically the last people on board. Are we going to hear the uh, boarding complete as soon as we step on board? There's no one here. <laughs> Just love a lounge, that's the problem. <laughs> I wanted to sum up on the lounge because we had to run away from it. <laughs> I don't think I like that as good as the uh, Terminal 5B lounge. I'm not sure if that's because it was daytime so I had a different ambience or if it was because it was busier. I quite liked it. Um, I mean, it's a lounge, right? So It had the same stuff in it. It's just the ambience was a bit meh. Yeah, I think it's more of a daytime thing. There's more people. It's always busier. Okay, so first impressions is it's the, uh, the same room. Sita's economy. He's just put the middle bit blocked off. We've been sat here for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes already. Haven't got a welcome drink. We got that on the long haul flight. I want my champagne, god damn it. So far, I don't feel like I got like the premium experience apart from the lounge. I had to check in my own bag. Uh, we went through fast track security, but they then put us through onto the normal bit, some kind of in the fast track bit. Maybe it'll improve during the flight. We'll see. Thank you, cabin crew, that stores to automatic and cross check please. Shortly after takeoff, we were offered complimentary food and drink. We opted for champagne, actual champagne on the plane, prosecco in the lounge. A light lunch of beetroot salmon gravelax with bellinis, bread roll, and a chocolate dessert. Oh, and real metal cutlery to eat it with. This was our first time eating proper gravelax, and it was absolutely delicious. As evidenced by Fran's happy dance, the bread was soft inside and chewy on the outside, and it just tasted great. Oh, there's Fran's happy dance again. But the highlight of the meal was definitely the chocolate dessert. Going in. <coughs> it was a chocolate mousse with a crunchy topping and it was just silky smooth and just tasted absolutely divine. So good. Okay, well that meal was pretty nice. Gravel axe was good. Uh, cucumbers had a slight pickle to them. I don't think I've had gravel axe before and I can highly recommend. Lovely attentive staff as well. They're really friendly and smiley and I like that. Let me give you a quick review of the actual seat itself. Obviously it's exactly the same as you get in economy. Um, it's quite comfortable for a short ride, which is fine. You have a tray table. You've also got a little pocket to store your bits and bobs, and there's like literature and stuff in there. There is a thing that should make the seat go back, but I've not worked out how to actually make it go back, so who knows if it actually works or not. You get this thing in the middle, which as we've discovered, is a perfect size for a phone. We have discovered there's no plug sockets or other power, not even USB. This arm has been pushed out a bit. You get about an extra two inches. Every inch helps bit. So I've just had my champagne topped up flight attendant noticed my empty glass and he was like do you want some more champagne and I was like uh, just a little bit a little bit and uh, this is apparently a little bit I'm not gonna say no to free champagne it's not free included champagne we just started our descent now into Dusseldorf and Fran is zoning out with some music <laughs> Fran has really bad um, problems with her ears when she's uh, descending so Maybe, well, in fact, even when we're taken up as well, so we take off and landing, always just stick some music on and zones out. I can't speak to her at all, so I'm by myself again. A very warm welcome to Dusseldorf, where the local time here is approaching 10 past 3 in the afternoon. On behalf of all of us on board and British Airways, I would like to thank you for choosing to fly with us today, and we look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thanks for your time, And we've arrived and we're second and third people off the plane. 
suppose that's another advantage to sitting up front. Yeah. But then I suppose we've still then got to wait for the bank to arrive. We'll get through passport control quicker probably. So we'll see what happens there. Awesome. Oh, the flight was actually quite nice. Yeah. Nice short flight, but we've got very good service on the flight, I feel. Yeah. Got a nice meal, two glasses of champagne. I think they opened the bottle of champagne and we were the only ones drinking champagne. <laughs> and they were like, do you want to finish the bottle? And like, no, but okay. We didn't, obviously didn't say that. Yeah, so I wonder if the next flight is going to be as good. Like I said, we're flying home from Basel in a couple of days' time, or from your perspective, now. And here we are in Basel slash Mulhouse slash Freiburg. Euro uh, Airport. <laughs> the airport that's in three countries, even though it's technically in one. Uh, it's a fun place. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful little part of the world. Um, but stay tuned for our video that's going to come out in a few weeks' time where we actually explore it a bit more. Uh, and it'll make a lot more sense then. So, yeah. Alrighty, let's go. Basel Airport was eerily quiet today. We felt we were ruining the ambience just by dragging our suitcases along. Business class customers have their own check in lane with staff counters. The desk agent issued our boarding pass very quickly and gave us directions to the lounge, leaving us plenty of time to explore this airport. But that's, that's a... This is so cool. <laughs> this contraption was built by Jean Tangli, an artist with a passion for movement and a fascination with how machines work. That's amazing. There's like deer head on there. Two of them. Yeah, but there's in Basel, there's like some fountains that this guy had also done, like kinetic fountains. They were awesome. awesome. You can see those in our, in our Basel video as well. There's a whole museum in Basel that has the biggest collection of his works. So if you are interested in this dude, you should go check him out. Jean Tingui. Tingui? Tingui? I can't say. <laughs> Security was very quick. We again had fast track, which meant we could go straight to this amazing lounge and relax before our flight back to London Heathrow. I think this is the comfiest I've been in a while. <sighs> the sun is like right in my eyes though. <laughs> We entered the lounge shortly after 2pm. It was very quiet, so we could literally sit wherever we wanted. However, according to the sign, this was probably the worst time to be here for food. Any other time of day, they would serve proper hot food, but between 2pm and 4pm, it was only soup and cold salad items. Not that the options were bad though. There was a good selection of items to choose from, although there wasn't any labels on it, so I didn't know what some of it was. And as you'd expect, there was also a full service bar with a selection of spirits, soft drinks, wine, bubbles, and also alcohol-free beer. I grabbed a small plate of assorted goodies and a glass of what I think was champagne and enjoyed it under this amazing canopy with the sun streaming through the glass roof. <coughs> this is a nice chair. Well, if that guy would just stand in front of the sun for me, that would be amazing. But the best part, it has to be this outdoor viewing deck. This is awesome. This is only the second outdoor area I've been in at an airport before. The other one was in uh, Gran Canaria, which is quite nice. But this, look, open air, there was air flight coming over there. A bunch of easy jet ponds over here. It's a little chilly, but it's, uh, it's fine. But those uh, windows are baking. Before we head to our plane, which has just arrived in from London, let's see if Basel's toilets are any better than those at Heathrow. And spoiler alert, they are. British Airways, take note. This is how you do a toilet in a business class environment. They were clean and tidy and finished to a high standard. The marble effect walls, polished floors and stone countertop just screamed classy. And this whole area just feels luxurious rather than just simply a practical convenience. Oh, and I did check there was no one else in here before I started filming. They get top marks from me. And I'm clearly not the only person that thinks this lounge is excellent. 
They've won Lounge of the Year by Priority Pass on at least six separate occasions and proudly display their awards next to the Luz. I would definitely recommend coming here if you ever fly in out of Basel. In fact, I'd consider even flying from here again just for this experience alone. It's a good lounge. But we have a plane to catch, so we need to leave this amazing place and head to the gate. Why not? More no, sweeties. <laughs> Okay, now I need to go through passport control. Which is conveniently located right next to the lounge. So we've got through passport control nice and easy. Need to find the gate, it's right over there. Priority, yay! Nice way. Thank you. I totally pushed in there. Well, yeah. We're in the priority lane, so therefore we're allowed to just push in. Okay. <laughs> Board. This is a slightly different setup. This one doesn't have the middle table, it's just got an empty seat. Uh, we also have a curtain on this one, here, which we did on the previous flight. Slightly different back to the seat. Just as good a welcome. After take off, the crew handed out afternoon tea. Okay, we've got ham and cheese sandwich, salmon on some kind of toasty thing, and then I think this is cheese and chutney. But the main event is a scone, scone with clotted cream, and there's some cake and tea because tea. I'm very happy now. Happy, and I've got the same except. Oh, the champagne. <laughs> Cheers. It's the same stuff, I think, as the red first flight. It's very nice. Okay, debate. Cream then jam or jam then cream? It's normally jam then cream. But because it's clotted cream, I think it has to go the other way around. I don't know. Like, whatever. It's all going to end up in my belly anyway. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's good. <laughs> so we're going to do the ultimate taste test. Cornish versus Devon. Or, uh, to be honest, I don't even know which way round it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I'll just have a give it a go. So firstly, cream, then jam. Okay, that's very jam heavy. Can't take much, taste much of the cream. So now for the jam, then cream. I can taste a lot more of the cream. I think I prefer jam then cream. And well, that's settled once and for all. Shall we go check out the loo? Here's the loo in the business class front, by well, the front of the plane. It's all at the front of the plane. Uh, pretty clean. Some hand washing things. Looks alright. Kind of small, but functional, shall we say. When I got back to my seat, the crew had kindly topped up my champagne. Whilst Fran opted for some tea because she'll be driving after we land. Whilst we enjoyed a rather dramatic looking descent into a rainy London Heathrow. To London Heathrow to the home of British Airways, where the local flight is approaching 20 to 5 in the evening. Good luck, thank you for choosing to fly with us today, and we certainly look forward to seeing you again very soon. I am going to time how long it takes us to get from the aircraft to collecting the bag and out, because our bags were tagged with the priority little label. So I'm going to see if it's actually any quicker. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Well, I've had no experience. I've just stayed at Heathrow. This is the first time I've done the couple of times I've been out of Heathrow, and it's the first time I've been in the bus. Yeah. 
Good experience, I feel. I liked, I like that, I like that a lot. Um, comparing the two flights, I think the second one was better. Yeah. What did you prefer, the food or something? Well, I wanted something sweet because I'd eaten all day, and so I was just like, oh, I'm pudding, and they gave us afternoon tea with the scone and clotted cream and jam. I mean, come on. Well, that was quite an experience. I would definitely do that again, actually. Yeah. It was. I wouldn't say it was a lot better for the economy. The attentiveness of the cabin crew was just, it's, it's on another par. I mean, I never have a bad experience on a flight. I've never had a bad experience on a flight. Like, cabin crew have always been amazing. And thanks, guys, for doing what you do because, I mean, customer service is quite a icky job. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, click bells and all that kind of stuff that you usually do on YouTube. Uh, whilst we were away, we filmed a couple of great videos which will be coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, they'll be up here somewhere. Um, <laughs> so look out for those and we'll see you again soon.